Elohim, the Archetype, the Witch, and Pattern of the Universe, Volume 3, Part 4. This pure spirit state of Yahweh can be likened unto a cloud which has no conceivable shape or form. And in this spirit, and in this spirit is encouched the attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, power, foundation, and strength. These attributes become united together in a conceivable shape and form, which Moses viewed as the great Elohim. This Elohim then was pure spirit, Yahweh, in shape and form abiding within still as yet unformed spirit. It did not take all of the pure spirit to form the super incorporeal form of Elohim. They're describing what uh, Moses saw in the vision atop Mount Sinai. Then Elohim created the physical man, Adam, in his likeness and image, and some 4,000 years later, Elohim himself is manifested in a physical body and walked around the universe that he had created. John 1 and 14, 1 Timothy 3, 16. This transmutation of pure spirit without shape and form into a super incorporeal shape and form, and then into a physical form, sets up a pattern that the whole universe testifies of and confirms. Let us witness the conception of a human being to see if it follows this pattern. Firstly, all physical beings were without shape and form at one time. And all the attributes and physical characteristics that were to make up such human beings were encouched were in couched within the grayish white sexual secretions cloud of the male and female. These primordial invisible substances are called genes and chromosomes, which later come together in an orderly fashion to bring about a shape and form still yet invisible to the naked eye, but later through amalgamation of cells. The shape and form become visible as a tiny embryo and later a fetus and newborn infant. Every human being born into the world has definitely followed this course of procedure in being born. Not only does everyone follow this three-step conception of first being without shape and form, later in shape and form, but still invisible to the naked eye, and then in gross shape and form, but each constituent cell, fiber, and tissue making up his developing body is threefold. Each living cell composing the physical body is made up of a nucleus, a nuclei, a nucleolus, a nucleus, and a cell body. Mature red blood cells have no nucleus. Then these cells are differentiated according to their position. And the developing embryo into endo, endodermal, the inner cell layer, mesodermal, middle cell layer, and ectodermal, outer cell layer, constituting tissues. These tissues then make up organs which are of necessity threefold according to the type of tissue composing them. And then organs constitute systems of which there are three sets of three. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, for example, one, nervous system, endocrine and reproductive. Two, respiratory, circulatory, and excretory. Three, digestive, skeletal, and muscular. These nine systems work harmoniously to constitute the total physical being who then is overall spirit, soul, and body. Man is, therefore, a threefold being from start to finish. And he is definitely and positively fashioned after Elohim, the shape and form of Yahweh. As we deal more and more with the different organs and systems of the physical body, one will find even more evidence of this threefold nature of man. Let us now, let us now turn our attention to the comparison of the threefold man. Moses is called up into Mount Sinai where Yahweh gave him divine specifications for building the tabernacle in the third month after Israel had left Egypt, Exodus 19.1.
this third month of the Jews sacred calendar year would correspond with the month of June in our Gregorian calendar year. Considering that Moses was in the mount for 40 days and then began to build the tabernacle and knowing that the tabernacle was completed and reared up on the first day of the first month of the second year, Exodus 40:17, after the Israelites left Egypt, April 1st. One could see that it was nine months in building how beautifully this correlated to the tabernacle of our physical bodies that required nine months to be built by Yahweh in the womb. Furthermore, the tabernacle of Moses built the tabernacle that Moses built had three coverings of goat skin, ram skin, dyed red, and badger skin, and our physical bodies are composed of mainly three layers of skin subcutaneous tissue and muscle. Moses saw the vision of the creation for six days while in the cloud that covered the mount, and he saw Elohim rest on the seventh day. But Moses was in the mount 40 days, so that leaves 33 days that Elohim was showing Moses all the generations of the flesh coming out of Adam and instructing him about building the ta of the tabernacle. These 33 days were fulfilled Matthew 5:17 by Yahshua the Messiah tearing on earth in the flesh for 33 years one day for a year in prophetic time Numbers 14:34 Ezekiel 4 and 6 Then when we examine the physical body we find that it has 33 vertebrae in the vertebral column one vertebra for each day that Moses dwelt in the mount after seeing the vision of the creation or one vertebra for each year that the Messiah dwelt on the earth. The tabernacle of Moses was the backbone of Israel's faith in Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah being our Redeemer is the backbone of our faith in Yahweh. It is the vertebral column that gives man his upright position and Yahshua is our uprightness in Yahweh. The tabernacle of Moses was surrounded by the 12 tribes of Israel gathered around it. And this was fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah by his gathering of 12 disciples around him. And these 12 disciples later are the apostles of the faith in the dispensation of grace, present age. This was confirmed by the apostle John in his vision on the Isle of Patmos. For he spoke of the 24 elders gathered around the throne of Yahweh, Revelations 4 and 4. These 24 elders were the 12 heads of the tribes of Israel under the dispensation of the Mosaic law and the 12 apostles in the dispensation of grace. We have to rightly divide our ages and dispensations. I'll show you all the ages and dispensation charts when we get into volume one. It's quite beautiful. Okay, let's see. Seeing that man is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh, then he must display in his physical body the same situation, for he does have the 24 ribs, 12 on each side, all gathered around the vertebral columns, with its 33 vertebra, typifying the Messiah's 33 years in the flesh. Then one must also consider that the whole body of Israel were led by the cloud wherever they surjoin. They did not move unless the cloud moved, Exodus 40, 36-38, Numbers 9th chapter. The Spirit of Yahweh dwelt in the cloud. Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled this by his obedience to the will of his Father, and not doing anything except that which was ordained of the Father, Spirit, or cloud. He was led of the Spirit, cloud, into the wilderness of Judea, Matthew 4 and 1. This same cloud that led the Israelites out of Egypt through the wilderness of Sinai and on into Canaan land was the same cloud as dwelled between the wings of the cherubims that overshadowed the mercy seat in the most holy place of the tabernacle. When one examines the physical body, he finds that there is a grayish white substance that fills his cranial cavity or head region, which we call the brain, and it is divided into a right and left half corresponding to the two cherubims of glory on either side of the ark. That's the ark of the covenant. 
and it is from the brain that man receives his orders to move or 